Hello. Oh, I'm Lisa. I'm Chris. And welcome to the Three of Skeins podcast, episode number 55. Wah-ha! In one counting system. In one counting system. <laughs> So, dear sister, I see that you have something on today. What? Oh, this thing? Oh, this is yes, this old thing. <laughs> no, this. So this is this is the the cocoon shrug thing that doesn't have a name yet. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 declaring her finish because I'm I'm tired of sitting on it. Oh, <laughs> so my neck my collar was supposed to be four inches. It's three. We're not going to tell anyone. Shh. But um. Yeah, she, it really, from the back, it really looks like a quilt. And I'm like, I think I like that. Yeah, that's part of the aesthetic. So, it's done. I think. How much yarn did you actually end up using oh, in that thing? Oh, Christ. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> each the squares alone, now, they were 50 gram skeins, but they were still like, I think it was 200 ish yards per skein. Mm -hmm. So just doing the squares took me three skeins per color. Yeah. So that was 12 skeins. Thank goodness I only paid $2 a skein. Um, and oh, the yarn, by the way, is Chow Merino from mm -hmm. Premier Yarns. And it's Merino, Alpaca, and Nylon. Um, and then oh, I use a lot more of this gray because I did the horizontal stripes on the back and the collar. And I don't know, I think it was up to like my sixth or seventh skein of the dark gray. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I haven't, I haven't counted my ball bands. <laughs> so I don't know exactly, but lots and lots of yarn. So what weight was that yarn? It's a DK. But it's very, considering how much yarn in it is in it, it's very light, it's very comfortable. Um, it does give off a little fuzz. It has some halo, so <laughs> sometimes I see the fuzz of flying. But um, yeah, no, I'm 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 happy with it. I think I think we're good. So what I did with the collar was just kind of like a faux cabling. Mm -hmm. So I just did three post stitches, and I like it. The sleeves are elbow length, as you can see, and I think I will just do a cuff. I was going to do long sleeves, but I didn't feel like it. So at some point I will go back and just match this and do um, a cuff on the sleeves. But I am tired of stitching on this thing. <laughs> oh my! This is why I don't make blankets. Yeah. Because after a while you just you just just like no, don't don't look at me. No. <laughs> so oh, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm I I do like it. I'm happy with it. But I'm also just ready to move on. I just I just am. But. It looks like you are completely ready for when the cold winds start to blow. And so I did this little thing on the front. I'm going to show you all the picture. I still have to work it out. But I just did, a, I put a band and a, the buttons are on the band. And mm -hmm. I just slipped it. I didn't even do buttonholes. I just kind of slipped it through the existing stitches so that it just, you know, holds it closed a little bit. But what I'm going to do is uh, make another, a second band and stitch them together just to give it a little bit more um, weight. Yeah. So, cause it, it stretches a little bit and I don't want it to do that. So I will just add a little bit of mass to the little band here, mm -hmm. but I like it. Do you have a stitch that's like, kind of imitates a woven fabric that's available for you? Mm -hmm. Like in knitting, there's a linen stitch that doesn't stretch very much. Yeah. We, yeah, Would linen you... stitch is pretty much the, the same in crochet to it. It doesn't stretch. Would you consider doing that? Maybe. I don't know. I'll do something. But I'm putting this away for now. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be stitching on it anymore. But I love how the colors worked out, Chris. It's got me thinking about squares though and like uh -oh. different things I could do and different ways I can do square effects without actually making individual squares. So you may be seeing more squares from me. But not right now. <laughs> and so this is how it looks in the back. It looks like a quote. It looks like I'm wearing a blanket, which is very funny. But I love how the colors are working. It That's comes just... down almost to my ankles. 
So yeah, pretty. I'm surprised at how much contrast you can see. I'm very, I'm very happy with that. You were absolutely right to make the squares bigger. That yeah. really solved that problem. But I like it. How is it to walk around in? It can I can yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's way better than the cotton version. Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah. Right. It. It. I mean, on my shoulders, it really. It yeah. feels like nothing. It. It's very, very comfortable to wear. So, I'm. I'm surprised. I mean, it's this really like lofty, light chainette yarn, but still, as much as I used it, I'm still really surprised. Yeah. At how comfortable it is. Because you. I'm guessing you use at least 50, I mean, 15, 50 gram balls. That's that's a lot of yarn. It is a lot of yarn. I got a great deal. Yeah, yeah, girl. <laughs> what size hook did you use? I used 4.5 for the body, and I went down to 4 for my collar. And I'll be putting the details in the description bar okay. below. Yeah, so she is, as she's declared finished. You know what? That's what counts. <laughs> that is absolutely the only okay, benchmark just, that I'm counts. Just, I'm just done. You know, like I have all these other projects in my head and I'm just like, I, I want to work on something else now. So that's what we'll be doing. And all I can tell you is someone has been putting this thing on anytime it's been the slightest bit cool I just, around I'm the just, house. I'm just, you know, making sure she fits and, you know, everything. I just gotta you, check her out You gotta wear bit. a test. I, yeah. I am a big advocate for wear testing, so I am mad at you. Gotta check these things out. It looks really good, though. How did you end up deciding to stitch the squares together? Because you had had a couple of options on that. I just did um, slip stitches. Yeah, I kept it simple. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. But yeah, she's done. And I'm ready to move on to other things. <laughs> That's all she wants to say right now. Is like, I'm done with this. Thing. I am. Oh my God. I am so this done. is why I don't make blankets. And now I'm like looking at you people who keep making blankets. I'm like, how, how, what makes you go back the second and the third and the tenth time to make another blanket? <laughs> oh my God. I couldn't. I just couldn't. But. I decided to wear a blanket. So <laughs> once I made it all wearable, suddenly it seemed more palatable. Yeah. <laughs> and the book is called Wrap Scarves and Cocoons? No. Oh. It's like, I think it's called Shawl Shrugs and Boleros. Yes, that's it. Shawl Shrugs and Boleros. That's where the book of body plan <laughs> came from. Made up three words. <laughs> And it, the actual cover picture that looks nothing like this is what she made it yeah, off Yeah, I like the squares better than just doing it all. And I think, honestly, if I had just tried to do monochromatic and just kept stitching and stitching and stitching till the end of my days, I don't think we would have gotten to this point. Yeah, just that phrase, till the end of my days, <laughs> kind of clarified <laughs> how you were feeling about that. Yeah. So, because technically after each square, I got to take a little break. And breaking it up the way I did just made it a better experience for me and switching between stitching and sewing together I yeah guess. yeah so give people breaks but i do want to like make coats um it's like one of the things that i make but we are gonna see how that works <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait to see are you done yeah all right that's a big old blanket that i'm wearing <laughs> So today we have two finished objects, believe it or not. I finally finished Rachel's vest. This is my baby's vest. It's it's just a vest. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeveless garment that covers the torso. It's a vest. But I made this in um, Barocco Ultra Wool Fine. Uh, for the simple reason that I had Barocco Ultra Wool Fine in the appropriate color. And I went with fine because that's the one I had navy blue in. So what I ended up doing is I took four balls and doubled them up together. So I made a worsted weight yarn out of it. And it's 100% superwash wool. It can go in the washing machine and in the dryer. Tumble dry low. <laughs> Wash cold delicate. <laughs> and I think, you know, 
she'll be able, to, and she wanted navy blue because she wanted to be able to wear it to school. So I think she will be able to wear this with her uniform, no fuss, no muss. So the details, um, it's a 34 inch body and it's 17 inches long. I used the Knitter's Handy Book of Patterns just to give me a basic body plan. This turned out to be quite handy. It is handy. It's handy as heck. <laughs> um, do check it out. It's a great book if you just want some basic patterns that you can do anything you want with. If I wanted to, I could have put any kind of fancy stitching in this. This needed to be plain because it needs to be wearable with her uniform. But the gauging is perfect on it because it came out the exact dimensions mm -hmm. that I got from the schematic. I mean, like to the inch. The only thing you have to do is accurately measure your swatch. That's that's it. So here's the my concept sketch of what it was going to be like. <laughs> no, I'm not an artist, but the sketches help me visualize what I'm going to be making. Yes, that is a little Jansport bag and a sketchbook because Rachel is actually an artist. I'm not. And I just saw her wearing it with her khaki school pants and her white shirt. <laughs> I see you, Crystal. I, I see. haven't said a word. <laughs> I'm sitting here minding my grown folk business. So I did add some details to it. I embroidered. Did I have to take a close up of that? No, I didn't. Okay. I embroidered a little label with her initials on it. And I'm having actually quite a lot of fun with these labels. What did Clearly. I do? I am. I'm having a hoot. What I do is I just buy a wide satin ribbon. And then I use, um, there's like a whole bunch of different free monogram makers online. Usually for, you know, wedding supplies, your invitations, your napkins, what have you. I find a cool monogram configuration for the initials I want to include. And then... I copy it onto the, the ribbon. Now this time the ribbon was really quite dark and I didn't really have a marking tool that was appropriate. So I copied the monogram onto some tracing paper and I basted the tracing paper to the ribbon and I just stitched it through the tracing paper. And then I ripped off the tracing paper after the fact, which was less fun than you would think. Because the big swaths in between came off pretty cleanly. But mm -hmm. guess what? I had embroidered over some of that paper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I was in there. The tweezers? That would have been helpful. Oh. With a needle kind of jiggling the paper out. I was obsessed by the time I was mm -hmm. at that point. So oh, I didn't God. want to get up and go look for a tweezer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, okay. But totally worth it. Totally worth it in the end. And... I really love this configuration. So I think this is going to be her cipher for whenever I make her something. It's going to just end up somewhere on the item. And then I stabilize the shoulders with a bit of ribbon, which is a narrower ribbon. So I bought a one inch ribbon and a two and a half inch ribbon, which I think is actually a little too big. I think I'm going to go with the one and I did with a one and a half inch ribbon. And I think I will probably stick with that going forward. But this was easier to embroider because it was more realistic. Oh, yeah. So I stabilized the shoulders by just sewing a small length of ribbon just along the shoulder seam. And that will also help it if you hang it on a hanger, not, you know, end up with the hanger boobo. I let Rachel pick her button. So I sent her pictures of three different buttons. And then on the inside of both the button bands, actually, I took a picture of that. I'll make life much simpler. I sewed a length of one inch ribbon on either side to support the button and keep the button holes from stretching out over time. And it will keep this band from stretching out over time too, because this is where you're gonna manipulate the vest mm -hmm. you know, over and over again. So it should keep its shape pretty nicely. And the buttons are nothing too fancy, 
but they do have a little tiny marble detail on them. So Tell me how you take that picture. Why come, Crystal? Why come? Somebody was not prepared ahead of time for filming. So while we were sitting here, she just holds up the vest next to her <laughs> and takes a picture. I was like, that is bootleg. A little bit. I ain't mad though. I mean, shoot. So much in this world is bootleg. <laughs> I ain't worried about a little bit of bootleg photography. Rise above, Lisa. Rise above. Okay. <laughs> I am not worried about a little bit of bootleg photography. So the only thing that needs to happen to this vest now is I am going to wash it once and then let it dry and ship, pack it up and ship it off. So she should be able to wear her, her vest in about a week after it gets there. Hopefully this will not be one of those cursed packages. Please, please. Please. Don't, how would you even say that? Don't you watch movies? I know, I know. Oh I my god. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have. <laughs> Why don't you just say Candyman three times in a mirror while you're at it? <laughs> <laughs> we don't mention that one. Um, so I did what something that's called a narrow slit buttonhole. Really cute buttonhole, hold it shaped pretty nicely, didn't need any extra finishing. And what I do suggest you do too is just to see how your buttonhole is gonna work in your fabric. You take your swatch back out, pick up a tiny button band on it and do your buttonholes. That way you see exactly how your buttonholes are gonna sit. And you notice the rest of this fabric is curling like a mug, like um, stockinette stitch always does, but this button band is just sitting up straight and tall. I practiced the ribbon sewing on it. I did it in white so you guys can see it because the stitching is completely invisible in the blue. And I did the slit style for the ribbon rather than making an official buttonhole in the ribbon too. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of trouble. Yeah, it would have been much more work. But I think that's all the details on that sweater. It was a fun, it was a fun knit. The instructions are very easy to follow in that book. And it gives you a chart that includes, I think it's like six different gauges. Mm -hmm. So whatever gauge you get, you can make an item based on your gauge, which was really kind of wonderful. And now my swatch just goes back in a swatch book and I'll be able to find it again one day. Because I don't know what happens to your swatches, but I lose my swatches almost immediately. I can't even tell you. So you um, sometimes I just rip them out and make them part of Like after I take my measurements, I rip them out and I make, make them part of the garment. So I don't usually have swatches. Yeah. Sometimes I'll ask her or oh, still have an issue. And I'll be like, oh, well, what happened to your, where's your swatch? Let's work. And she'll be like, oh. We'll see. We'll see here. We, we start saving swatches. Yeah, because I think. Pretty sure my swatch became a square. <laughs> <laughs> now this is going where all my swatches are going from now. And then that was the neat thing about having the swatch book. I was able to find this swatch when I wanted to do a button band. It was like, oh, what? It's right there in the book. <sighs> <sighs> so dear sister, what else is going on with you? Nothing. I'm trying to think of what I'm going to make next. And I have two candidates. Now, the thing is, it's really not that serious because I'm going to make them both eventually. Mm -hmm. But I don't know which one I'm going to work on next, next. Um, so, I've been perusing the internet. And I have been wanting to make a wrap top. But I found a video of this woman who did a, um, like a faux wrap top because it doesn't like tie in the front. It's just it stays in place and it you just pull, it's a pullover. Okay. But this is actually from a YouTube video and the channel is Madeline Shirley and the video I think it's just called Easy Wrap Top. But the way she did it it's like dead simple. And I was like, "Oh, snap, I can do that." So, I might just use her her method from making a really simple, you know, v-neck cross front top. That's cute. 
And what I want to do with mine, though, is make each half a different color. So I might be using these two. These are from 100 Ravens. I always forget how many Ravens it is. <laughs> I always want to say 1,000 Ravens, but no. 100 Ravens, and this is their Yaksha base. So it's Merino, Yak, and Nylon. And I have one skein of each. And what I don't know is if one skein is enough to do half the top. That's okay. Because I have a backup plan. <laughs> I will switch to a different yarn if it turns out. So I'm going to try to do some mathifying mm. to figure out before I start <laughs> if it'll be enough for me. <laughs> what? You're going to do some... Oh. To do half of the top because there's supposed to be ways that you can figure out how much yarn your product is going to take and I don't know that I actually believe that but I'm going to try one of those methodologies um, so I can know ahead of time but I really like to make it so that you know the top is two different colors because I just think that would be really really cute yeah but like I said, we, we, we have to do some of the math on that. We have to, we have to check some figures. Now, y'all don't know what a momentous occasion this is, okay? <sighs> Let me call it momentous. Somebody here is known for, like, taking out the hook and... Whee! I, I swatch things. <laughs> <laughs> I do. And because that's, I do measure my swatch to figure out, you know, how many stitches I'm going to need to make something my size. So I, I it's not just, whee, no, that's not what's happening. But I don't figure out my, my yardage mm -hmm. beforehand. And just about every project I start, I'm like, oh, I should do that for this one. Yeah. And then I don't. Because at some point at 10 o'clock at night, she says to me, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough yarn for this. I'm like, oh. <laughs> however, and I'm like, good luck. However, I almost never, well, I almost never run out of yarn. Yeah. But when I do, I just, I, I come up with something. I like, we'll do, we'll do some stripes or what have you. But um, yeah, so we'll see. I have no idea how much yarn this will take because I think the one I showed you guys, I think that's worse than weight. So, you know, it's I can't even say like in her video she told us how much yarn she used because that still wouldn't. Oh, that wouldn't work for you. Yeah. yeah. So, we will see how this goes. Um, the other option for my next make comes from a knitting pattern book by Nora Gone. So I put it on. And you know, I forgot what the pattern name is, but the book is called. Knit, fold, pleat, repeat. Didn't, didn't have to even practice that. Um, <laughs> but basically, you take basic shapes, squares, rectangles, triangles, and you fold and tuck and do magical things with them to get really, you know, things that look much more complex than they actually were to make. And I was looking at the patterns in the book on Ravelry, and I saw that, and I was like, <gasps> That is stunning. I love it. I love it. I love it. What are you making the mess? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, but that is basically it's a triangle. So the piece it Ravelry describes it as a poncho. Oh. So it it I don't think the sides are seamed, but it's seamed at the, the top of the shoulder. And so then you get those nice little tails hanging down, which I think is so cute. Yes. Now how we're doing that little bit down the front, I'm not sure, but I have an idea of what I would do in its place. However, I did just order that book. Because so, <laughs> <laughs> there were a number of things in there that I really liked. And that is the, the idea behind this book is how I like to work. I like to work very simply and use basic shapes, but just add a twist, a tiny, one tiny little thing that just, you know, enhances whatever it is I'm making. Um, so I thought it would be great to just get more ideas um, because there, there's a crochet in the book. I think it's called Two Simple Shapes, that it's the same idea. You use squares and rectangles 
to make different garments, but the, and I didn't think the garments were that exciting. There was mm -hmm. one thing in there that I was like, oh, really? How'd you, how'd you turn that into to a jacket? But for the most part, it was, it was like ponchos and I don't know. It, I don't think they really elevated things past the basic shape. <laughs> they just showed you different ways to sew together the shapes. Yeah. So this book um, intrigues me. And the pattern's called Jabo. Oh, okay. So I might make this. And if I make this, I will be using a yarn called Whisper Lace. Um, the brand is Fibra Natura, and it is distributed by Universal Yarns, and I believe it is 7030 wool silk. Am I making that up? No, yeah. 7030 wool and silk, and it'll give me that, you know, kind of diaphanous quality that I think that one has. Because I don't know what color, my purple is just a representative, but I don't know what color I would use, but I will probably be using this yarn. Um that would also be really nice on the mohair, though. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. But you know well, what? It would be really cool if you held that with a mohair. But I don't, I don't, I don't. So I don't know which one of those I'm going to make next. But it's going to, I'm, some, my next part is going to be a triangle. I did squares this time. <laughs> it's going to be a triangle next part. Next time, I'll be doing triangles. But <laughs> I don't know which triangles I will be doing just yet. But. It's going to be one of those two. And then my project after that will probably be the other of those two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see it all coming together now. But yeah. I was very excited when I found both of those. That, that's exciting. So I, yeah, I, I'm already ready. That's another reason I'm like ready to just like move on because I already know what I'm going to do next. And I'm excited. And yeah, I'll be starting one of those in the next couple of days. I'm excited as heck now, all right. So I too have a pip in the works. You know how I don't normally work in a mono, what is it, monogamous, in a monogamous way? It's It's been difficult. It has. So what's been helping me like stay the course? <laughs> Look. We, we I gotta don't know why it's so hard for you because I the working on multiple projects would drive me nuts. My mind is a magpie. <laughs> don't just own it. I do. I mean, I mean, what do you always say? Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is a magpie. It's okay. I accept that. But so I had a sweater that I was planning to make, right? But then it got knocked right out of me. It got pushed down on the list because I saw Queen Latifah. And I was like... A thing she was wearing. Yes. Not just like, oh, I saw Queen Latifah. Now I can't think about anything. <laughs> no, I can't think of anything else aside from Her Majesty the Queen. <laughs> so I saw Queen Latifah wearing this, this case. You still didn't send the picture? You know, it was in there, but I took it out because we had a long line of pictures. But it's okay. I have it. I had it all ready to go. So I saw Queen Latifah wearing this and I was like, oh, I really like that. So I started thinking about, okay, what yarn would I make it in? What, what do I want to do with it? And I started like making a little idea, you know, a lot of little notes about what it is and how to do it. So I made a sketch. This is my beginning sketch. What do you think? Killing me. So I sketched it. Now notice I haven't added any color to it yet because I'm going to be trying out my first notion of what I think the yarn is going to be. But I did copy her pose. Yes, I so see I can that. see it on okay. me. Looking away. <laughs> she does. So please excuse that little blob. I added those lines late and when I was erasing my pencil lines, the ink was still wet. So it'll go away after I color it. So this is my next project. I'm still in the, okay, let's figure this out stage. So I have chosen this yarn. Why? Because I have scads of it. Now it's not a brand I've ever heard of before, 
It's RY Classic Yarn. It's a 64% extra fine merino wool, 10% angora, 24% nylon, and 2% metallic fiber. So you see it has a little bit of a, of a twinkle to it. And I like that about it. This is it. a very heavy weight, though. It's a worsted weight, but it's a light yarn because the yarn itself is not, it's not twisted. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's kind of like a roving with the metallic twisted around it and a little bit, probably the nylon holding it together. But I think it's going to knit up in a very light sort of way. Uh, kind of the way the chainettes do. Mm -hmm. It's going to have like a lot of loft to it. So, what I have looked at so far on this piece is that I like the high-low nature of it. I like the drapiness of it. And I think I'm going to be able to get drapiness out of that yarn. And when I looked very closely at it, I saw that it has, in the stitching, a kind of horizontal movement. So, I, my next step on this now is looking for a stitch pattern that will give me some sort of texture. And I like that. And you see how it's kind of fuzzy wuzzy? You see the fabric has a little bit of fuzziness to it. I think the Angora in here is gonna give me that sort of fuzzy wuzziness mm -hmm. to the yarn. So I went on over to Pinterest because I'm lazy and I didn't feel like coming and getting my stitch dictionaries. And now I'm looking for a stitch pattern that A, will not be a pain in the butt to knit, B, will give me some sort of overall texture. I may go with that horizontal liney texture, or I may just go with a texture. And my other requirement is I want it to be a pattern that lies flat because it's not really edged. And I kind of like that. I, mm -hmm. I like that clean vibe. So if the pat, it's going to be, for me, it's got to be a garter stitch based pattern because it will more than likely lie flat on its own. And I won't have to do some sort of um, edge treatment to it to get it to lie flat. And now I am thinking, do I want to make it in two pieces or do I want to make it in the round? I don't know yet, we'll see. But that that's where I'm at with that pip. So I will be in my swatching process because one of the things I told myself is like, no honey, you can't swatch until you finish Rachel's vest. So I got all of the final finishing detail work done on that vest last week. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'll be up embroidering. One morning I got up really early and I was like, okay, I'm embroidering today. Let's do this. Um, and that that's where I'm at with that. So those of you who are interested uh, in doing concept sketches for your work, I found this book very helpful. This is Modern Fashion Illustration by Holly Nichols. And she, now notice my sketches don't look anything like hers. <laughs> but if it helps, I say if it helps you see the thing the way you need to see it, do it. Because sometimes it's even hard for people to move off the color they saw the thing in. Because there's no other vision of it. So... I found this very helpful. You know, because my sketches for clothes did used to look like little, like, and I found that <laughs> the method she gave for uh, drawing yourself or drawing somebody in your things, in your garments, was very, very helpful. You got anything? I got, that's it for me. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's it for me. I mean, I have a lot of patterns in my head, but oh no, I'm trying to focus on one thing at a time. Uh, I need to clone myself. Good luck with that. So each of the clones can make different things. But then I would be the only one to wear them. I just saw. Remember, I told you I was watching um, the Midnight Club. Mm -hmm. That was one of the stories in the Midnight Club. This woman was. Uh, she cloned herself so she could crochet. Well, no, the oh. devil cloned her. And told her, oh, you could live two different lives. One where you're a disciplined ballerina and the other one sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And you can imagine how that worked out. It was great the first couple of nights. She ended up losing a leg. 
Both clones? No, just one. Okay. I don't want to tell you what happened to the other one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, and if you want to check out The Midnight Club, it's pretty cool. I like it. It's on Netflix. Yes. She neglected to mention. Yes, it's on Netflix, and it's a Netflix original. Don't let that scare you off. Because it does scare me. When the, I see the, that end, the I'm The track like, oh. record is a little spotty, but I, I'm actually enjoying this one. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm calling it. I just came up with that. Okay. Are, are you going to share? I guess I have to now. Yes, you do. <laughs> I'm going to call my version of Queen Latifah's cloak, the Queen's cloak. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you writing? I know. I'm like you're writing a lot. Like we're still filming. Uh, yeah, Chatter, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I feel like she just forgot. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure I wrote it down because I'll forget otherwise. Okay. So. British politics. Right. I want to update update you guys. Rhinebeck. Oh, Rhinebeck. Okay. We weren't there. No, we didn't <laughs> go to Rhinebeck. The end. <laughs> <laughs> I like good story. <laughs> um, and now we uh, we've been. I really only watched Nitty Nighty's video mm -hmm. about Rhinebeck, but I thought it was a good video because I felt like she. Well, it was two parter. Yeah. And she gave like a realistic look at what Ryan Beck was like. Like she stood in line for 45 minutes to get mac and cheese. <laughs> that was like at the venue itself, yeah. at the little uh, food court. Yeah. Um, but it looked crowded. And I feel like even outside of a panoramic, I don't know that Ryan Beck is for me because 20 barns? Compared to like New Jersey Sheep and Wool, which was four barns and then a few vendors in a satellite building. And plus a few vendors outside. And we were tired after that. But I think she said she did six of the barns. Twenty bar who I I yeah, I don't I don't know. Logistically that doesn't make sense to me. And then, you know, they're spending like so you spend all the money to get there and eat and accommodations and what have you, and then I mean there's no way you can even visit all of those vendors, much less have enough money to, to shop from a significant number of them. So I'm not sure why. I would travel all that way <laughs> yeah. to end up visiting like a handful of vendors. And then there were two events before that, right. Cake Palooza and um, Woolen, Woolen Folk. Folk. And each event has its own admissions fee as well. Um, and I know she said Cake Palooza was like 30 minutes from the actual Ryan Beck event. Yes. Um, and how far was um, Woolen Folk? Because it wasn't I'm on the fairgrounds sure. either. Because I, I know where she stayed, she was... Uh, Right on the the grounds with woolen folk. Yeah, but I don't know if she. I don't remember her saying how far that was from, from Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck. Um, and they're apparently like getting out of Rhinebeck. Like just a random person had to like get out of their car and direct traffic because there was like a, a T uh, intersection, and people he had to just let cars go from one side and the other mm -hmm. one at a time because. Otherwise, there would be no getting out of there. And I was just like, oh, that's terrible. Actually, you know what? I was watching, I watched a few people's videos, right? And I was watching the videos because I'll admit it. I was like, you know, I I, I had a little tiny bit of FOMO um, about Rhinebeck. But then I saw the crowds. And you would not believe how that quenched my FOMO. I, I it was like... because. Even just getting there would have been a hassle. Yeah. I just found out from Nitty Nighty's video that you could take a train. Mm -hmm. um, but goodness knows how much accommodations would have been. Well, you have to book a year in advance. You can't book like... To buy yarn? Three weeks out. Is that what then, I'm doing? And then go. But I feel like people don't feel like they're officially in the community if they don't go to some of these events. I don't know you know, that. and <laughs> I personally, I am, I'm with you. Rhinebeck is too big an event for me at this point in time. 
I would um, I would continue going to something like uh, New Jersey Sheep and Wool because there's still a day's worth of yarn to see. Mm-hmm. And all the accessories and all of that only on a much smaller scale. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm not mad. I'm, at, I'm, I'm sure not mad fun. at you for going and enjoying the festival. I'm just saying, I know now is not the festival for it me. It was a lot of Alpen Glow. <laughs> yeah. It's not the festival for me. But it's like how after a while we would you we used to go to um Comic Con every year. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger every year. And towards the end of our Comic-Con journey, it just wasn't as enjoyable anymore because it was. We couldn't get into panels anymore. Yeah. You can't, couldn't get into a panel without waiting in line for like an hour. So we just spent all our time on the, the marketplace floor. Mm-hmm. But every once in a while, you want to see a panel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we would do all the tricks. We would like go to the panel before and you're not, not leave. <laughs> we yeah, they that started for a clearing while. the room, after, clearing the room after that. That worked for like the first couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> we got into some of the bigger panels too doing that. We sure did. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, I personally think that event also has outgrown its space mm-hmm. and it's not an event I would want to go to anymore just because there's too many folks. Remember that first year they did Thursdays and we had a Thursday ticket? (sighs) Thursdays were like serene. Yes. It was lovely. But uh, Saturday, elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder, the fire marshal threatening to shut the thing down. (laughs) It's just, I don't, for me, like big crowds, long lines that are between me and the the thing that I, I want to see. It just diminishes the event for me. So mm-hmm. I just I just don't think I'm a ride that girl. I'm just I'm just not. And, and, and that's okay. That's okay. That's, that's I okay. think that's the, the thing. That's, but it's not even like a bucket list for me. Like, oh, one of these days I do want to go to Rhinebeck once. Nah. I mean, honestly, I would just go look at the vendor list online and check some of them out. <laughs> you know, online and just that's like, what, oh, if I like that yarn or the notions or whatever. That's what I did. I would look at the vendor list and <laughs> check check out what they had. <laughs> because yeah, I don't I know personally I was exhausted when we got back from New Jersey Sheep and Wool. I can't imagine what happens to you <laughs> after you spend a weekend. Because for us it wouldn't make sense to just go for the day. We're too far away for that. Yeah. So we'd have to spend the weekend Rhinebecking. Now, that was something interesting Nitty Natty said. She said that uh, next time she goes, she would like to plan some time to have downtime. Mm-hmm. Because, but it's just like you will either see more of the event or you will have your downtime. Yeah. Because, the, I mean, the 20 barns at Ryan Beck, there were almost 60 vendors at Woolen Folk, and then it looked like maybe like 20 or 25 or so at Cake Palooza. When? <laughs> like, yeah. when am I supposed to get around to like half of that? Yeah. So, and then there's all the little ancillary events, you know, going yeah, on. Yeah, there were like a couple of yarn stores and meetups of various kinds. It sounded like a lot. Yeah. And then, like, a lot of like standing and walking too. It's not just like, mm-hmm. you know, there were like a lot of places to sit and rest. And I think maybe that's something, I don't know if they can build that in and have maybe more picnic tables or something, but I don't know. I don't see if you have like any kind of like physical disability, I'm not sure how you're doing something like Ryan Beck. Well, that was a discussion that came up that, you know, accessibility, physical accessibility was an issue because apparently they used to have a vendor that rented scooters to people Mm -hmm. and they did not have that this year. Oh, and then people chose events based on, like, uh, what was it? Woolen Folk advertised they were doing COVID restrictions. And a number of people said when they got there, there was nothing, no math. And that was the other thing for me. I would not be comfortable around so many unmasked people. That, yeah, that's it. Yeah, she, she's not doing well with that. No, Lisa no bueno. So... You know, 
I think this is this is the reality going forward. So I'm not really sure what there is to be done about that. Yeah. But um obviously it's something I think about too, but as long as I'm wearing my mask, I tend to feel a little bit better. But yeah, that was another thing. Yeah. <laughs> like I when I saw how many people were there. Um just gonna be prudent. <laughs> I don't know. I think I would like to do to go to some smaller. I was events. just thinking, like I do like yarn festivals yeah. very much. I definitely and want to go small. I would definitely like to go some to smaller ones. Like I think if Woolen Folk were a standalone event, yes, I yes. would have gone to something I would, like that. I would like that. Yes, because but, it was small, but it felt big. Because <laughs> fifty nine vendors is a lot of vendors. It is okay. By the time you walk through all of them, and you know, some of us we do that thing where we don't buy the first trip through because we want to see everything. Oh, I do think, and then you do the second. Forty-five dollars is a little bit much for admission. Yeah, that was high. I do because neither Rhinebeck nor Cake Palooza were that much. Cake Palooza, they uh, their price was tiered, so based on what hours you went, the earliest tickets were twenty-five, down to the latest tickets, which were ten dollars. And Rhinebeck was twelve dollars a day, so yeah. it was twenty four dollars. So, and that's only if you did both days. Because yeah, what I did see a lot of people saying was one day of Rhinebecking was enough for them. <laughs> <laughs> I do think Woolen Folk was a tiny little bit expensive, but oh, and Nitty Natty said that she thinks that Sunday is going to be her Rhinebeck day because it was so much less crowded on Sunday. But really? Yeah. Mm, pro tip. Pro tip. Yes. <laughs> Um, what is coming up for us? Um, New Jersey Wool Walk is coming up. They have already a, put out a date in oh, April. That's the next year, though. Yeah. Like, I don't know if there are any more like in the for now. I'll just be checking out um trunk shows at my local yarn stores. There's one I want to go to next month at Slip Stitch Avenue, and that's how I'll be getting my fix. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that I I think I want to start going to more trunk shows. Because yeah. it, it kind of gives you that tiny little bit of yarn festival atmosphere. Yes. But, you know, not the big crowds. <laughs> and not so much to, to see that you're distracted. You can't yeah. even, like, figure out what it is you want to do. I like that Chunk Shows focus you on Just specific one vendors. brand, yeah. yeah. And you can see more of what they have to offer. Because they usually bring at least a couple of lines. Yeah. Um, that, 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 yeah, that's that's lovely. Let me ask you guys. What kind of yarn events do you want to go to? Even if you haven't been to one yet, what are you, what's the one that you've got your eye on? And what are the things that you really enjoy about yarn festivals? Because I like the overload. I get sensory overload when I get there and I get on this buzzy high and when I'm surrounded by we yarn. We handle crowds better being from New York, but... It, the crowds in New York annoyed me. <laughs> like trying to get through the subway or whatever, you just dealt with it because yeah, that was the way. <laughs> yeah, but it was never something that I was like blase about. Like I was just never a fan. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 it, but it's different now. You know what I mean? In the era of COVID, crowds feel different. You know, I could be annoyed by. All right, I could be annoyed by when the subway platform got full, you ever been on a mm -hmm. subway platform that was edge to edge? Yes. Hate that. But if it was just ordinary crowded, it didn't trouble me in the least, hardly noticed. Right. Yeah. So that, I was just like, I think this is the first time I really watched anyone's Ryan Mac video. So mm -hmm. I, it was something that I just kept hearing about, but I didn't really like know anything about. So this is my first introduction really, yeah. you know, remotely. <laughs> Yes. To to run back and I, for me it's just I don't know I don't think I would go for me it's too big it's like Crystal was like wanting to go to San Diego Comic Con and for me it was always kind of way too big yeah that, that is our view of Ryan back. <laughs> yeah. yeah let us know if any of you guys went yeah how, how did I you enjoy it? hear from people who went. If, what was your experience like? And was it your first run back? Yeah. So some people did ask for an update. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, so if you didn't see last week, I got a little obsessed with British politics. Me too. And 
they just lost their second prime minister for this year. And so they had to decide on who their third prime minister would be. And because the parliamentary system is very different, um, the only people who were deciding who was going to be the next prime minister were the Tory members of parliament. So the Tories are one party and Labour is another party. Um, which it, it doesn't sound terribly democratic to me, but okay, them's the breaks. So who were our contenders for prime minister? Well, there was Rishi Sunak who tried to be the second prime minister for the year and he, he lost yeah. to Liz yeah. Truss. Um, there was a woman named Penny Mordaunt who came in third place last time around. But guess who tried to sleaze his way back into 10 Downing Street? None other than Boris Johnson. Imagine that. Apparently, he was on vacation in the Dominican Republic and he left early, flew home economy <laughs> to <laughs> try to get back into power. So the rules were such that each person who wanted to be a candidate had to get support from 100 members of parliament, 100 Tories. So remember, we're only talking about one party. So they had to get support from 100 members of parliament. So like pretty much the day he got back, he claimed to have his 100 members backing him. Now, Sky News was doing a count on screen. And so we know that Rishi Sunak had a bunch of support very early on, and he actually crossed that 100 member threshold with people publicly declaring for him um, pretty quickly. Penny Morton still stayed in third place. Last number I saw for her was like 24 members of parliament supporting her. Mm -hmm. Boris Johnson got up to about 59 members of parliament, although he was claiming steadfastly that he had a hundred. The lies. And some people were, you know, casting some doubts on that. But the deadline was Sunday, 2 p.m. And Saturday, even though he had his hundred members, he withdrew, Boris Johnson withdrew from the race. Now, is there anyone who believes that if he actually had a hundred people behind him, he would have withdrawn from the race, especially considering he went to both Rishi Sunak and Penny Morton yep. and tried to get them to drop out, the which is exactly what you do if you've already met your threshold, of right? Course. Of a hundred members supporting That's what you. I do. Is that what exactly. Do? So he said he decided it wasn't the right time, even though it was the right time when he got his economy seat on his plane. Mm -hmm. It was the right time when he said he had 100 people supporting him. It was the right time when he tried to push the other candidates out of the race. But all of a sudden, Saturday night, it wasn't the right time for him to try to be prime minister again. Okay. So Penny Morton never got to 100. Boris Johnson never got to 100. <laughs> Let us be clear about that. <laughs> and so it, it was just all she soon at. Now, I did see someone say on the news that they thought but because apparently they just kind of made up what the rules would be for how mm -hmm. they would pick their prime minister. Um, they thought that the rules committee did specifically make that hundred member threshold to try to keep Boris Johnson out. out. Yeah. And apparently that worked. So now Rishi Sunak is the prime minister. He is the youngest prime minister they've had in like centuries. Was it decades or? It's been a long time. Yeah. Oh no, since, since I want to say. It's been a very long time. 1812. He is the youngest yes. prime minister they've had um, in, a, in a while. He yeah. is the first uh, prime minister of Indian descent and the first Hindu prime minister. And his wife is the daughter of an Indian tech billionaire. So he's worth almost a billion dollars. Yeah. And he got his money the old fashioned way. He married it. So he'll be making great policy that doesn't disadvantage poor people at all, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Me too. Um. But so far, I think he's kind of held off the cries for a general election. So far. Which is one of the things the, the Tories were hoping for. So, on to Suella. I'm not even paying that chick no mind. What is her name? Suella? Braverman. Braverman. Suella Braverman got fired last week by the prior prime minister, Liz Truss. Apparently, it was an email scandal. That's, that's all they're talking about at this point. She sent an email from a private account that she should not have sent from that account. And they don't know if it's out there in the ether now because apparently parliamentary account, par email accounts, you can't forward things or anything like mm. that outside the system. 
So guess who gets hired to be the home secretary? That was the job week. she just got fired from. Yes, yeah, she was home secretary last week. I think it was last Wednesday she got fired. And this week, Rishi Sunak hired her back. Why is that? Because she represents the the super racist ring of their party. Super right ring. That's what that means, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. That's, yeah. Okay. I said what I said. <laughs> and he wants to keep their support. The brown man. I just feel like he couldn't have picked anyone else. I mean, she just got fired last week. Yeah. Wednesday of last week, she got fired. I mean, she probably still had stuff in her office. Maybe she hadn't even moved out her office Yeah, yet, she so. didn't have to move back in. Maybe it was just convenient. I don't know. But, but she represents that. She has publicly stated that she has dreamed about deporting people to Rwanda. That's not deportation, though. Let us be very clear. Because yes. when you deport someone, you send them back to their country of origin. Taking them to a, a third-party country is kidnapping. Yes. Let's just be clear about that. Yes. yes okay. Indeed. And the other um, bit of news is that the very racist people in England, their heads are literally exploding right now. Really? I personally have been enjoying that coverage. Because the the colonized takeover has been completed, and that's literally the the things they're saying. But that's the news on England. I can't wait to see how it's going to all go. You can see Lisa is not prepared to be a news anchor because <laughs> she puts things puts things quite indelicately. <laughs> but that is just so um, I just. Just so if any of you wanted to know who eventually became prime minister, yeah. the third prime minister yeah, for, the, for year. the year. I still believe they'll have a fourth before the year is out. Me too, actually. I really do. I do. But we'll see. I could be wrong, but we will see. Because Farage says he's getting back into politics. Oh, gross. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, interesting. I'm indelicate. <laughs> <laughs> I see I'm not the only one. Okay, so that's our British politics two minutes. <laughs> it's not going to be a regular segment. Maybe it will be. It may be because I've been watching. <laughs> let me tell you, there, there, there's a time difference. So sometimes when I get up early, that's the first thing I look about. Like how are things going. <laughs> but I think that's enough foolishness from us for today. Anyway, have a great week, everybody. Be well. Stay stitching. Toodles.